Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. On the line with us is our old buddy Greg Pallas, investigative journalist, author, filmmaker, the best democracy money could buy. GregPallas.com is the website. You can tweet him at Greg underscore Pallas, just like I'm Tom underscore Hartman. Greg, welcome back. Glad to be with you, Tom. So I was just debating with Julio the privatization of public schools. And, uh, you know, segueing out of that, you have been, you and I were talking over the weekend about the privatization of public power. And uh, I'm talking about electricity when I say power. And uh, what PG&E is up to and, and how it's actually killing people and has killed a whole bunch of people. And, and then San Francisco said, well, we'll buy PG&E's uh, San Francisco infrastructure and, you know, pay them a good penny for it. And, and PG&E said, screw you. Uh, same thing happened to Portland, by the way, about a decade ago when it was yes. Portland Gas and Electric here. And uh, But when Enron went down, uh, this part of Enron got spun off. The city tried to buy it. They refused to sell it to the city. They said, we will not sell it to a, to a nonprofit, to a city, period. How do they get away with that? <laughs> Here's how they get it. It's called greed, okay? You know, if, if, if you, if, if the banks make a killing. It's, it's even more than the stockholders and the executives who are cash in on private utilities who have you by the bulbs. There's only one line that goes into your house. The idea that, there's a, that there could be a free market in electricity is a, is a nutcase fantasy. And people should know, before I was an investigative reporter, I was an investigator and a specialist in crimes committed by power companies like PG&E. Whoa. And um, I brought bracketeering cases on behalf of the Justice Department and several attorneys general. I worked at the California Utility Commission, by the way. And for a short time, um, you know, I ran uh, the, uh, I was the executive director of the New York Science and Technology Commission, and there I wrote a law where we had a similar case on Long Island, New York, 3 million customers, the giant utility. The, the, it was, was it out Long of control. Island Power? It was killing people. Long, light, local, Long Island Lighting. And oh, okay. um, it was killing people. And the lights were out. The reliability was terrible. The, the investors were greedy, and the management was incompetent. And so we took over the company. We took this giant private company. We being the state or the city or who? The state. Okay, okay, what happened is the state of New York created an authority right. which bought the utility, took over the utility on behalf of the consumers. I wrote that law. I was asked to write that law, which allowed the state to do it. And here's how we did it cheaply. Forget, hey, hey, uh, San Francisco, forget buying the lines that's expensive and they're going to fight you in court. Um, San Jose has a great uh, idea for making PG&E this renegade deadly utility. It's, it's an academy for accidental arsonists. Yeah. It's got to go. It's in bankruptcy court. And so uh, what we did was in Long Island, which you can do in California, we can do here now in California, is to make a hostile takeover, just like Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, just like all the corporate raiders like Wilbur Ross. In fact, by the way, I, I uh, brought in Wilbur Ross to help out in Long Island to take over this renegade power company and make a hostile tender offer for the company's stock, which a state can do, believe it or not, hmm. to protect its citizens. We did, and I coupled it. I also drafted a civil racketeering case against the company. A jury awarded us $4 billion. We bought the company for a buck. Wow. Okay, now, and that's how you do it. Okay, I, I don't know what do a it. hostile takeover tender is, Greg. Can you, okay. and I'm, I'm sure. guessing probably a lot All of right. people listening have no idea what you're talking about. All right, if, if, you, for, if you didn't see the film Wall Street, uh, basically PG&E stock is in the toilet. It's worth $5 a share and dropping. If you add up all the shares, it's less than $3 billion. So rather than buying their lines at high price, still being, you know, you're literally still plugged into their crazy, dangerous system, you buy the whole shebang buy for less company. than $3 billion. Yeah, you just make a tender offer. You buy their stock out. Is a tender like offer where you go out to the, all the stockholders and say, hey, you're, you're sitting on a... On a PG&E, you know, you've got 5,000 shares of PG&E. I'll buy it from you for a certain amount. Is that what you're talking about? 
Yeah, right now it's five bucks, and it's burning down to zero, as the Wall Street Journal says. And so, if, so, if, so, so, if, so if the state came in, if California came in and said, "Okay," because uh, the, the PG&E's stock is held by you know individuals, by, by right. pension funds, by all kinds of things. Um, so yeah. if the state comes in and says PGE stock is five bucks right now, uh, we will buy any outstanding shares of PGE stock. Any any you know anybody who wants to sell it to us, we'll buy it for eight bucks a share. Um, right, and so, you couple so you can that bail out of your, you know, go ahead. Yeah. Now you have to add a second hammer, and this is the second hammer that worked in Long Island. Again, I want to tell you, we took over this giant power company, which is it serves an area as bigger than San Francisco right. in population and size. And we cut the rates. We increased the liabilities. We turned the lights back on. We made it a safer system. And by the way, we shut down a dangerous nuclear plant, the Shoreham plant. Right now, PG&E, just so you know, is running the Diablo nuclear plant. And if you think that that's a safe idea with those bozos, I don't think so. Yeah. We, so we did it in Long Island by saying, yes, we're going to buy this. But we also filed charges against the company, a civil case for the damage that they created and the lies that they told us. And if you're wondering about PG&E lies, let's put it this way. Currently, in Sonoma, there's the Big Kincaid fire. According to terrific investigative reporting by the Wall Street Journal, P this was fire was caused by a snapped jumper cable on the Geyser electric line, which PG&E said two years ago they would fix. The fix would be done by April of this year. It's October, ladies and gentlemen, and it busted and it set Sonoma County on fire. Ninety-three thousand people have just been evacuated from that fire. Wow. That is now. That's what. But that's what. That's our. You know what you did. What you're describing. You know, charge, charging yeah. Long Island Power with with, uh, uh, you know, with Black basically theory. crimes. That's happening right now with PG&E. I mean, you've got you know some of these families uh, who had members killed in in some of these fires, and you know homeowners and business. I mean, there's just a whole pile of lawsuits against PG&E. That's why they're declaring bankruptcy to get out from underneath all those liabilities. But so, what we need is we need the state itself right. and the and the local governments to file massive fraud and racketeering cases. The evidence is screaming at you. This right. it's literally burning in front of your face of mass and, and uh, greedy negligence. It's all about, the reason they didn't fix the line is not just incompetence, it's a lot of money to fix your system to make sure. it, to, so it doesn't kill your customers. You know, remember, they're, they're, uh, in San Bruno, um, they burnt eight people to death, you know, and, and when their gas lines exploded. Again, I investigated that, that was negligence. They knew that they had a faulty pipeline inspection gauge. So it's a long history of PG&E, Cutting corners, saving money, burning you to death, blowing up your home. And this as a no judge joke. pointed out uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, while they were doing this, they were funneling four and a half billion dollars to their shareholders as dividends, and they were paying their executives millions and millions of dollars. You know, I, I mean, just huge bonuses and, and high pay and all this kind of stuff. Um, let's just turn this over to some good old-fashioned, you know, bureaucrats who know how to run a power company. Uh, you know, the, the people who work for the state who are not making, you know, $30 million a year, but, you know, have a good salary and a pension. And, and you know, bring in the, the technocrats, the people who understand power, and have them do it right. That's right. And, in fact, actually, the, the city of San Jose has said, let's make it a cus customer-owned utility using the power company's own engineers who actually know what to do if they're given the okay by the management and they're given a budget. Sure. PG&E has no... So we have to take over this company, and we have the pattern from Long Island, New York, a multi-billion dollar utility, which we took over for nuts. And that's the only way to save yourself from being, you know, burned... From being crisped. ...in your electric bills, <laughs> if not physically. There you go.